So the FA Cup adventure last season kind of ended in a little bit of heartbreak. Stoke City, quarter-final, stuffed us. Absolutely stuffed us. As I'm sure you guys remember, I'm not going to show a clip. It was heartbreaking enough. This season will be different. Fingers crossed, like I'm touching wood here. Um, if, if we can start well and our FA Cup journey starts today. I mentioned it in the last episode. It's Portsmouth. A nice draw. Can we do the business? That's the second game of today's episode. We are in January too, so... You know, maybe there'll be some transfers. Maybe. Maybe. It's not a transfer special though, because like we're not going to make that many transfers. That's more of a summer thing. January. We'll see. We'll see. Hit the intro. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Revitalising Villa. This is episode number 30, the big 3 -er. We are officially middle-aged. This series is officially middle-aged anyway. And, well, today then, the FA Cup will be coming against Portsmouth, as I mentioned. But we start at Villa Park in the Premier League against Burnley. A side that, you know what? They, they like our colours, they've tried to steal our colours, they've tried to steal our Premier League play, especially when we're relegated, but not anymore, I'm not having it, and today we are going to put them in our put them in their place, not our place, their place. As you can see here, we have actually done well against Burnley so far in this save, um, two wins and a draw, and the form going into this one, I'll tell you, it's not bad, it's not bad at all. So we left off with that disappointing 3-1 loss to Watford, that was, a, that was a kick in the teeth, I will tell you that much, but... Since then, things have been pretty good. On the TV at home to Leicester, we drew 2-2. Jonathan Codger with two goals, one from the penalty spot. After we were 2-0 down at half-time, and I thought, Leicester, 2-0 down. We are struggling. I had I had flashbacks. I had I had absolute flashbacks. But Jonathan Codger scored twice, and we got a point. We got another point against Wolves. Again, a weird, weird sort of game. Andres Pereira scored twice, one from the penalty spot there. Roland Salai also got a goal, but Musa Soko is now playing for Wolves. Jordan Graham and Musa Marega, the two Musas, caught us a problem. And yeah, another point. But you know what? I'll take it. We weren't losing. And we did win against Sunderland, a side that are doing actually very well since promotion this year. We went 1-0 down too. James Vaughan with the goal, but Jonathan Codger struck to equalise with 20 minutes to go. And then a final two-minute salvo. Kodja with what I thought would be the winner and then Sago added another in literally, literally like the last kick of the game and we'd won, we'd won and it leaves us in a very, very good position. We're officially just over halfway through the league season and we are sitting there comfortably in ninth and you know what, we're, we're only two points off Europe. I mean, that's incredible when you think about it but 20 games played, 7 wins, 8 draws and 5 losses. We are... We are, we are slightly above average, I'd say, at this point, and that's that's not bad. It's, it's progression. It's what we're doing, but a good end to the season could see us in these sort of areas. And Europa League, you know what I mean? I'll take that. As I mentioned, we are in January, and I am thinking about a certain transfer. There may be some more information on that after this game. I don't want to spoil it for you, just in case it doesn't happen. But this is the team for today's game, then. And it's a little bit of a different side than what you're expecting, really. Joe Hart in goal. James Bree plays at right wing back. Um, you have, of course, Pascal Stenzel, who had an injury. He's suffering a bit. Van der Veel, not really fit. Arista Elastundo, not really fit. So it leaves only James Bree, and he comes back in. He hasn't played in a couple of games, so he gets another opportunity. It's Mawson and Chester at the back. John Sutar. He's gone off the ball a little bit and we'll bring the captain back in, get him some game time because James Chester hasn't played as much as he would have liked this year. It's Mitch at left back who's just been incredible all year. Mr. Consistency, you would call uh, Mitch. He's been, he's been really, really good signing. As has Caceres playing in the register as always. It's, it's his position. He owns it. In the deep line playmaker, we're going to bring in Lewis Baker. Now, now you may be thinking, oh, what about Fab Alex? Fab Alex is in the team. I'll get to that in a second. But Lewis Baker plays deep line playmaker. I think when you're not playing Fab Alex as a deep line player maker, you've got Baker, you've got Hurahan and Mikel Julen, who can all sort of play it. But I think Baker, he deserves a good opportunity. He played so well for us last year and he hasn't really had a fair shake at it. So hopefully today he can prove with a good performance he can he can play in this team. Is Fab Alex then in attacking playmaker? Now the role you see here, it doesn't really suit him. But if you look at his stats here, it suits him really well. He's improving very, very nicely. 23 years of age. And he is he is a very, very good player for us. I'll tell you that much. 
I think he's my favourite player of all the new signings, but then again, that might not be true. Pereira on the left scored twice, of course, against Wolves. Um, and you know what? He's in some pretty good form. Good to see. Kodja and Sego, the two goal scorers against Sunderland up front, which means Wolves Gonzalez drops out. He, he's just having a bad few games. Everyone has them. It's fair enough if you look at his form. Yeah, hasn't scored in four. He's played a lot. Hasn't scored in four. No assist either. He's gone off the boil a little bit. So, you know what? We'll get him out of the team and we'll get someone new, fresh in. King Kodjak gets gets the opportunity he's probably been waiting for. And Burnley, you like you'd expect, because they are Burnley, they line up with a 4-4-2. Tom Heaton's still there in goal. Callum Chambers is at right back. Fosu Mensa from Manchester United is there. Goldson, I think he's a Huddersfield defender. Centre back. That's a centre back partnership I'm not quite sure about. And hopefully we can take advantage of that. Robbie Brady on the left. Sessignon Defoe, Cork, Goodmanson. It's Barnes and Wood up front. Goodmanson's a very good player. He's he's someone to watch. Sessignon, of course, is a very good player. I kind of wish we'd signed him, to be honest with you. On the bench, they do have Ashley Westwood, a former Villa man, of course. And it's interesting to note, no Scott Hogan. Hasn't played a game for them this season since he's moved to Burnley. So, I may have been right to sell him. Again, a home game, and I say this quite a lot, but these home games against teams like Burnley are... Must win, really, for us. I mean, if, we're gonna, if we are going to push the challenge to Europe, I don't know. I'm, I'll be happy to, of course. I mean, if you if you want want us to, it's not a problem. But we have to win these sort of games. We haven't started well here, but it will be a Villa corner. It's out as far as Baker. Fab Alex now, what can he do? Fab Alex is cross and Mawson's there at the near post. And you could argue he probably should have scored. Sago's picked up a knock. That's not a good start. It looks like a twisted knee. I think I'm just going to get him straight off and let's get Walter Gonzalez on. Um, just because I don't want to take a chance. We can't afford an injury to, to any of our strikers, really. So Gonzalez comes straight back in. It's unfortunate for Sago, but you know what? Two complete fours up front might work in our favour. It might not, because Burnley have done well so far in the opening 20 minutes. Seven shots. They come forward now with Brady and Wood. Chris Wood's a striker who tends to score goals in these games. I tell you, he does. For some reason, he scores goals against me. Cork, great interception by Chester. My words failed me. It was a weird pass by Pereira, though. This is a weird highlight so far. It's up towards Wood. Mawson's won in the air. Brilliant, brilliant header, but it's just coming back at us. Sessignon to Goodmanson. Now Pereira has to get back. He got a foot in, but it's just fell for Defoe. It's a weird highlight so far, and Villa have won it back again. Neither side wants to keep the ball. Caceres to Baker. Now Pereira. Can we build an attack here? Fab Alex. Where's he going with it? Oh, it's a great ball. It worked. It worked, and Kodja scored. Fab Alex has the assist. The attacking midfielder. I mean, I went silent for a second then because... I was expecting the defender to cut it out, and we'll look at it in 3D here, but it seemed like the defender messed this up. A great burst of pace here from Fab Alex, sprinting away and chips it over the top. Oh, he's just missed it. He's missed his header completely there. I don't know who that is. I'll have a look in a second. But Jonathan Codger says, thank you very much. He's a man in form, King Codger. He will not miss chances like that. And the north end goes wild. It's uh, Tim, oh, of course, Timothy Fosu Mensa, the man I highlighted and said, I'm not sure about that defence. Well... Hate to say I told you so. Villa 1, Burnley nil. then. In 30 minutes on the clock, we if we can get a second goal for half-time here, it should be game in control. Then again, with us, you never quite know. Here's Baker to Caceres. Fab Alex now. Where's he going with it? He's, he's going on amazing run again. He might be able to find a cross here. Alex's cross. It's Walter at the... Oh, it's Walter. Walter Gonzalez back in with the goals, and it's all about Fab Alex's play here. Moving into the attacking playmaker role, you guys were probably thinking, hey, he can't really play it. You tell me he can't really play it. His stats said he could. And well, the results are there. Brilliant run from him. And he's, he's, he, they can't take the ball off in the cross to the near post. And there's Walter Gonzalez, who, as I said, and as I showed, wasn't really scoring. He is now back in with the goals on camera two. It's Villa two, Burnley nil. And you know what? You can have your nine shots. We'll have three. Three on target, two goals. Efficiency. The Villa way. No Deadpool for this game. I think he just... Hasn't really performed over the last last five or six games or so. And the fans are starting to get a bit worried. I'm going to bring him in for the Portsmouth game. I'm going to change the squad a little bit about. And Deadpool will get his opportunity. Which means you do get to see that, that wonderful intro again. Half time then. And it's a 2-0 lead. And we are we are comfortable at the moment, I would say. I haven't really saw a Burnley chance. That's a stupid thing to say at half time. But I'm going to say, you may be winning. That could all still change with performance levels drop. Don't let that happen. Everybody's happy apart from Fab Alex. This is not the first time when I've said something like that. I'm not surprised. He's on at 8.82 assists. So passionately, I'm very happy with your performance. And it's just confused him. Well, I wasn't really talking to you when I, when I was saying, like, concentrate. I mean, I was. But I was talking to more about the defence. If we let Burnley into this, I'm going to be very unhappy, basically. Is, is that all right with you, Fab? If 
Bad Alex. I'm, I'm calling him an ice lolly now. Jeez. We haven't had really a proper free kick taker in this save so far. Baker's a good free kick taker, but he's not someone who, who you you see him taking a free kick and you think goal. This is a good pass wide for Kodja. I should stop talking because Pereira has sent it wide, but we are working opportunities and Jonathan Kodja is at he's he's on fire, I would say. With half an hour to go, I'm thinking about a change and Fab Alex is struggling at 71%, I would say. Mawson's also struggling a little bit, which is a little bit weird, and defensively that's a problem. So I'm going to get Sutar instead on. Fabalix will have to play out. We have Salai there who could come on later on in the game. We don't have a striker on the bench, which is a little bit weird, but of course we brought Gonzalez on, didn't we? Come on, Kyle, come on. Right, Burnley highlight here possibly, and Goodmanson, who hasn't really been in the game so far, and he's Ashley Westwood on his Villa Park return, and probably played there last season, of course, but. I've just remembered, so this, this is what counts. Fosu Mensah's long pass, Barnes will keep it in. It's a crossing towards Wood, and that's a simple, simple goal for Burning to score. And you know what? It's a goal we shouldn't be conceding. We really shouldn't be conceding there. I mean, look at this space here. This is where the ball ends up. So Chambers gets it back to Fosu Mensah, and it's just one long ball over the top. Barnes is away from Chester, who sort of, sort of lost his man, and Wood, of course, is going to win that header. We brought off Mawson, who's more of an aerial threat in the, well, aerial protection, I suppose, against Wood, and that's a problem that I didn't think about when I brought him off. Okay, just over 13 minutes to go, and I think I'm gonna stick it on the counter um, and just get us to, to take a breather with it a little bit. I think, I think that's probably a smart option. We need to try and hold on to this game and I am also going to bring off Fab Alex. He's had a fab game too, a nine rating. Let's get him a standing ovation. Let's get Hanson on as a defensive midfielder. And Baker can just play the deep line playmaker. It's a triangle in the middle. It's a triangle. Jamie Hansen hasn't had the game time that he had last season so far, but when he has come on, he's he's been called upon and he has done pretty, pretty well. Oh, why? Why now would you do that to me? So we're gonna play the last five minutes with ten men. Great, wonderful. Let's let's stick it on defensive then. Let's stick it on defensive and move Gonzalez into the middle. That's not good news. That's not good news at all. Hopefully that's not a bad injury because Jonathan Codger has just come into a bit of form. But it looks like with time ticking away, the first win of the episode is in the bag here. Two tiles had her away and there's the full-time whistle at Villa Park then. Aston Villa 2, Burnley 1. I'm worried about that injury. If you look at the stats, I mean... I feel like we've kind of FM'd them. Okay, then Kodra has twisted his ankle. That's interesting. 30 years old now. His better years are behind him and injuries could happen quite a lot for him. I'm not sure what's going to happen to Kodra next season. I've got to be honest with you. Physio, I think, out for three to four weeks. I'll take that. Aston Villa enter Euro Cup race with the win. Maybe. Maybe. Michel Sago, of course, was injured as well in the first half. Um, and he's out for three to four days with a twisted knee. So he will miss the Portsmouth game. Um, but he may, he may be... He may be back for the next ones, I won't worry. Fab Alex stars as Aston Villa scrape a win. Yeah, we'll probably just scrape it in the end. Fab Alex arrived at Villa Park from Real Madrid for a free of 2.7 million. I mean, that looks that looks an absolute steal now, doesn't it? I'm gonna to say to him, you were superb with the number and quality of chances created in the last match. Keep it up. I really appreciate your comments. He loves me. He loves me already. Fab Alex is, is pretty much my favourite player at the moment. I mean that changes on a game to game basis, so it's not really the same much, but you know what, I'll take it. Aston Villa's options in the striker department have become even more limited with news of striker Jonathan Codras suffering a twisted ankle. As things stands, Walter Gonzalez, Deadpool, and Ross McCormack. No, get get lost. We've got Walter Gonzalez, we've got Deadpool. We've also got James Hill. Of course, pretty boy Hill. Improving every day. Interesting news then. Connor Hurahan, who has... Well, well, we've had a falling out, I'll say that much. He's not happy about his game time and he wants to leave the club. A £4 million move, well, a £4 million offer from Brighton has come in non-negotiable, which is a bit annoying, and a selling team wage contribution of ten grand is very annoying. I mean, it's on thirty-seven grand. He's valued at 6.75, but because he wants out, we have a problem. He's at 28 years of age, so his best years are probably just gone past him, or, or, or now, I suppose. It's an interesting one, really, because 
He's been a very, very good player for us over the past two years. Championship season in particular, five goals and five assists, two player of the matches. He was very, very good. In the Premier League last year, seven assists, a very, very good comeback. But he just hasn't played enough, I would say, this year. With the talent that we brought in, again, the likes of Fab Alex, Conor Hurahan isn't finding a game. We've brought in younger and we've brought in better. And I think for that reason, I'm going to accept it. We'll do it. Conor Hurahan, I'm sorry. It's time for you to go. And before we get to the Portsmouth game... Some interesting transfer news, I would say. A new signing, Giovanni Lo Celso. He's a man we signed from PSG for a fee of 8.25 million. It could rise with the add-ons. Um, but you know what? He's a man I'm surprised to see was transfer listed. If you look at his stats, they are very, very good. Very, very good. Let's compare him, for example. I mean, I'll be playing him sort of behind a striker, advanced playmaker role. So let's, let's compare him, for example, to Fab Alex. And as you can see then, Giovanni Lo Celso is a slightly better version. I mean, they're, they're, they're on a level, to be fair. They're not, they are very close to each other, but he's got better stats. Very, very good vision looks. Vision 16, decisions 14, composure 13. He's a man that can rise to the occasion. And as I say, I was very, very surprised to see him transfer listed. It was just a weird one. I mean, for PSG, he's only had two first team appearances, but he scored twice in those two league games, by the way. So... One of them's a penalty. His ratings across the board are incredible. Giovanni Lo Celso. He's a man, I'm sure a lot of football manager players out there know he goes on to be a very good player. So for 8.25 million, we've picked up yet another bargain. The question then is, will Lo Celso play today? No. No, he won't. He signed on the game day, so no, he won't. You'll have to watch the next episode to see Lo Celso in action, won't you? I mean... Hopefully he makes a fantastic start. But this is the team for the game against Portsmouth today. And it is multiple changes. Galini in goal instead of Joe Hart. You've got James Brady keeping his place at right back. Alistair Dundo is back. And that's a temptation actually. I'm going to do that. Alistair Dundo plays. I'm pretty sure he's fit. He, I'm pretty sure he's fit. And he wanted some game time. So yeah, makes sense. Alistair Dundo right back. I take it back. Alistair Dundo. It's John Sutar and James Chester, the centre-backs. Um, Alfie Mawson drops the bench. I think Alfie Mawson is our best defender. Legit. Bet we'll best centre-back because, of course, of course, there's Mitch. Super Mitch. Joe Bryan plays at left-back. It's his first appearance of the season. He's a man that, you know what? He signed a new contract, but he hasn't played. He's happy playing under me or not playing under me. So, you know what? He gets a game time today. Jamie Hansen has a register, which means which means Santiago Caceres drops out. Jensen is the deep line playmaker. It's Salai behind the two strikers. A Fab Alex is on the bench if we need him. It's Morgan on the left. Pereira is not even on the bench. It's Gonzalez. And up front, alongside him... Where are my manners? Introductions! Yeah! Call me Deadpool. Never gonna end. Never gonna end. Never gonna end. Never gonna end. Right, it probably will at some point. On the bench, I'm playing him, James Hill. I'm playing him on the bench, and I'm going to get him some game time, unless things go horribly wrong, but he's, he's improving very nicely. He's only 16 years of age. He's a regen that could be fantastic. Let's get him his debut in the FA Cup against Portsmouth. Why not? Let's do it. Interesting to know, we've actually played them on this save once. I don't remember playing them on this save. Why do I... What was the previous meeting? Can I, can I see it? Ah, Carabao Cup, third round last year. We beat them 1-0. Jake Doyle Hayes with a goal. There's a name that isn't playing anymore. But we are favourites, like you would expect, and we've won our last two. We are unbeaten in four. Can we continue it? Fratton Park is a difficult place to go, and it's a sellout, of course, for the League One side, who are mid-table League One. They're in ninth there. They're doing all right, not bad. Um, this should be a game we should win, though, to be fair. Like you'd expect, the lower league side, Portsmouth, have a very defensive formation. That's a 4-2-3-1, but the defensive version, to say the least. Men to sort of look out for. Zeki Fryers used to play for Crystal Palace at left back. Um, Ryan Leonard's a good player. South End used to play for. Very good player there. That's the only two really that stick out to me. On the bench, nobody in particular. A. Hughes. Is that Aaron Hughes? It's Andrew Hughes. It's fine. It's not. It's not Aaron Hughes. He's probably retired now. Brett Pittman is there on the bench for them. That's an interesting, interesting man for them. 21 appearances so far. Two goals. So, deadly. Interesting one with the team talk then. Assertively, I'm going to say the media have been praising you, but don't know. No, that's not good. I fully expect you to keep our run going and win this match. Yeah, they didn't care. They didn't care. Team talk are a lot harder on this, this year's game. I've got to tell you that. I've thought that from the very start of this year's game. Already it started. Giovanni Lo Celso, of course, only signed today. 
Yet, Mike Watson from BBC Radio 5 Live says, You've left him out. Is that due to his recent injury, pro recent injury problems? I'm sorry, what now? Right. Well, I will say that is a lot of injuries and his groin keeps coming up. Hopefully, that doesn't become a problem. An FA Cup run would be very, very nice. Of course, we, we did well last year in the competition and we, we proved that we can do it in cup competitions, but our Stoke result still hurts and a cup run will do... Oh, we won the lot. Okay, I'll take that. It's an own goal by the looks of it. It's Matt Clark. I was saying a cup run will ease that and it's helped out by the Matt Clark there. By the Matt Clark. That's what he is. He's the Matt Clark. It was Salai into Hansen, who's, who's getting up there as, as a regista, who shouldn't be there, but Clark stuck a foot out. We haven't had a shot, but we won the lop. Fantastic. It's the best sort of wins. We haven't won yet, for the record. We have a throw in though. Salai getting right to the byline, getting away, finding a cross. Deadpool flicks on and Walter makes it too. And after 13 minutes at Fratton Park, this is comfortable. Very, very comfortable. I mean, I might just sit back. I'm just gonna, gonna, I might, might doze off, go to sleep. I mean, it's easy, easy. Watch it. Watch the beautiful goal. Deadpool's flick on. Walter Gonzalez, two in two. Mwah. It's probably a bit cheeky, isn't it? So I better I better act like I, I uh, want to win this game. I mean, my squares, my chair's squeaking and everything. Leonard with a long clearance. Now, his Huwula. Huwula, Huwula. Oh, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Lewis now. Pompey looking to come forward. Ellis Dundo had to get there, and he did do. Portsmouth have got a lot of men forward here. A goal here and the game is probably back on, you know. Barlassa, it's an easy save for Galini. It took me a while to read his name then because it just looks so weird. Interesting that Jake Dulhaze has scored for South End. I don't know if you quite, can quite see it there before it goes off. That's that's good. He scored against Portsmouth last time. He likes scoring when we play Portsmouth. I mean, admittedly, it's not for us this time, but it doesn't matter. We are tuning a lot then and we are looking pretty comfortable. It's been a fairly even game if you look at the stats, but we've dominated possession. That's the important one. We're on control. We're on short passing and that seems to be working at the moment. It's Jensen's free kick. Haven't saw much of him. It's flicked on by Sutar. It'll fall out as far as Jensen again. Here's Jamie Hansen now. Jensen. Where are we going with this? We haven't saw much of Jensen. He hasn't played much, but he is a very good player in his own right. And, uh, a couple of good games and he could force his way into the squad. He's a good backup. It's into Walter Gonzalez. Spreads it wide for Morgan. It was a weird pass, but Morgan finds a cross and Thompson hacks clear. Brian now to Jensen again. Jamie Hansen. We know he likes to hit them, but I'm not sure he will there. He scored that corker against West Ham at the end of last season about eight episodes ago now, if you remember. It's into Deadpool. Deadpool scores and, well, well, the Merc with a mouth and he scored. I really want to just change his player profile to the Deadpool mask. If there's anyone that knows how to do that, drop me in the comments, tweet me, and I want to make that happen. Jensen was the playmaker for this. I mean, hold on one second. Let's watch this in slow motion. He's better than the goal here. What the hell does Jensen do here? Going that way. We're going backwards. Oh, we're turning. Oh, and her back heel. I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible. We'll speed it up as Deadpool puts it in the back of the net, by the way. Brilliant goal from him. 3-0. It's not even at half-time. Not even at half-time. This is such a big step up for us that we've come to, by the way. Big, big step up. Considering we struggled to a victory in that Carabao Cup game, it's coming back to me, as I remember. Today, we are not struggling. We are 3-0 up, and there's the half-time whistle. And you don't start. It doesn't matter. We're 3-0 up. 3-0. 3-0. I'll keep saying it. 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. I'm very pleased. Keep it going, lads. Don't you worry. Get as many goals as you want. Morgan's on a 6.7. Not really playing well. He's our weakest player at the moment. Andre Green. Go on then. I have um, offered Andre Green out to loan. And this is probably going to be his last appearance of the season for Villa. Because he will be out on loan in the championship. He's not going to get the game time for us this year. So a good loan spell could mean could mean an opportunity in the first team next year. He's got to prove himself. He hasn't done it so far. Here's Burgess. Bowler. Bowler. Martin Bowler. No, Martin Fowler. God. Portsmouth nil, Aston Villa 3 then. I'll say it again. Aston Villa or 3 nil up. It's very rare that actually happens in this save, so I'm just enjoying it. Maybe don't don't burst my fun by saying it's against the League One side. Well, we're 3 1 up. Deal with it. Jensen. Salai. It could be 4 here. Towards Green. Salai again. Just over. Roland Salai. I feel like we haven't saw the best of him this year. Um. And we might not because Fab Alex is, is, is probably going to play the attacking midfield role in the next. We've got Los Celso as well, though. There's options everywhere. 
20 minutes to go then. I, I'm going to watch the highlight before I make a change, actually. Oh, God. I've, I've ruined it. It's going to be theirs, isn't it? Lewis to Thompson to Morris to Townsend. Good save by Galini. He wants a clean sheet, Galini. We haven't had many of them. And we want a clean sheet here. It's Balassi's corner. Balassi, not Balassi, not the Everton we can get, by the way. Let's make that change while I'm at it. Um, I'm going to bring off Gonzalez. And on will come for the Aston Villa debut. Number 29. James Hill. Pretty boy, James Hill, by the way. Hansen's free kick. Deadpool is fell for Jensen. And we've gone all the way back to Brian. I don't think it's actually a highlight. I feel like it's not a highlight. Jensen picks out Green with a good pass. What can he do, Andre Green now? That is kind of why he's not playing first in football. But there he is. Pretty boy Hill is on the pitch. I mean, play the sexy music. Okay, that's enough of the sexy music. Stop the sexy music. Imagine if he gets a goal. Imagine if he gets a goal. He's number 29. He's number 29. It's Andre Green that's 19. That confused me. McGee now. Long clearance. Joe Bryan's comfortable, comfortable there. And he's done well for us, Bryan, in his first appearance of the season. He's he's not put a foot wrong, really. Not not many of the team has. It's been comfortable today. Hansen and, and Jensen are playing a game between themselves. Andre Green's getting involved in it, though. He's like, give me the ball. Salai. Salai. I mean, he's found Deadpool. It's Deadpool with another chance. And he sent it wide. I want James Hill to get a goal. I think it would be brilliant. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. It's... It's 20 seconds to go, and the second half we seem to take our foot off the gas, which is a little bit disappointing. But the job was done in that first half, and it is a wonderful, wonderful victory. There it is then, full time at Fratton Park. Portsmouth nil, Aston Villa free. Now usually I end this, I, we, we go to the screen where I end the video. Not just yet, let's do the FA Cup draw. Love a good FA Cup draw, love it. Good performance, but don't let it get to your head. That doesn't usually work. I pressed the wrong one, but I'll take it. It seemed to work today. FA Cup fourth round draw. Here we come. Here we come. Walking down the street. It's the FA Cup fourth round. And it is the draw you meet. It was a proud moment for Aston Villa and for James Hill as the 16-year-old made his debut for the club. Good stuff. And I'm thinking a loan out might be a good idea, actually. I've moved him. Where have I moved him to? To the under-23s. I'm thinking if we offer him out on loan for the rest of the season. Oh, I can't yet, can I? Because he's on a youth contract. How old is he? Can I offer him a proper contract? Yes. Yes, I can. So let's do that. He can have them. That's fine. Sign your contract and let's get you out on loan. We've been awarded £70,000 for beating Portsmouth. You never knew it was that lucrative. Anyone interested for the finances, by the way? Yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. I've used the transfer budget. We've smashed that out. And we're at minus £6 million. Pounds. A weird one, really, because I think it's the transfers, to be fair. Yeah, I would probably say it's the transfer and the wages, but they're giving me the budget. So, you know what? It's on you, Dr. T. Before the draw, we say goodbye to Connor Hurahan. He's been very, very good for us. And he's looking forward to moving to Brighton due to their performance in the league. Are they? I think they're championship. They are championship. They're, they're at the fourth. They're, they're doing all right. Championship is probably the best level for Conor Harahan, I would say, at this point. It's a £4 million flat fee as well, which is good to say. I'm going to make a passing comment. I'm going to say, you've been a fantastic servant to the club. You're welcome back anytime. I've had a great time here. You've really helped me improve my game. I'd love to come back one day. Maybe. Maybe he's a coach, Conor. Maybe. I'm disappointed to see him go because he's... He's been really, really good on the save. He's brilliant in real life. He's, he's a very, very good player. Hard working. Conor Horan, you will be missed. Well, I won't say you'll be missed because we've brought in La Celso and, and really good midfielders. But I'll miss you. And so apparently will James Chester. He wants to know why we've let him go. I have every confidence in players such as Mikel Julen stepping up. I mean, more more like La Celso or Fab Alex, but we'll do it. That's a good point. The youngsters of the James Chester. What a man. Okay, then here we go then. FA Cup fourth round draw. We finally got there. Still teams in the hat, of course. Manchester United, Man City. The other ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 37 teams left to draw. This could be a long one, so I'm going to cut this. I'm gonna, uh, there will be edits in this. Let's just. I'm just going to. I'm going to commentate through. Tottenham Premier League. That'll be a tough game. To tough, tough game. Tottenham away, and that's for Bournemouth. All Premier League clash. Okay, this is where it could get interesting. Birmingham City away. If fate is listening. 
We both know what's going to happen here. Not that. Not that. Plymouth. All right. All right. Maybe next round Birmingham if you can beat Plymouth and we can beat whoever we play. Fleetwood or Southampton. Southampton probably should win that replay, to be fair, against Aston Villa. There we are then. We were just two, two draws later. We nearly had that big game against Birmingham. Instead, it's Fleetwood or Southampton in a game that you could probably argue, I mean, if we have a look, Southampton should win. But if we look at their, if we look at the actual game, that it was a nil-nil, a nil-nil away at Fleetwood, and you know what? Looks like they haven't performed. I take Fleetwood. I would take Fleetwood. The rest of the draw, then, I've I've drawn I've drew the all teams, and I mean Chelsea versus Manchester United. That's a big team dropping out straight away. Arsenal versus Everton, another two big big teams dropping out. Liverpool versus Leeds, too, also jumps out at you. I was so hoping we get Birmingham. I want to do a revitalising Villa is War episode. Let's get the paint back on. I'm not sure when we actually play them, and I'm not sure if that'll be the next game. Not sure yet. Quickly before I go, I mean, there's lots of little things that I want to keep involved, but we need to pick a new vice captain. Interesting. Fab Alex. Fab Alex. 100%. 100%. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end to episode number 30. A very, very good episode. One of our best ones in a while, I would say. Two comfortable wins, which is nice to see. And you know what? Goal scorers all around. Also, Lo Celso. What do you think of Lo Celso? Lo Celso. Lo Celso. Brilliant. Brilliant name. Brilliant signing, I think. Um, really going to add to the team. Conor Hurrahan. Sad to see him go, but it's about time. Well, sort of. Oh, that was a bit mean. I didn't mean it like that. I, I meant, I meant it's the right thing. FA Cup fourth round then. Fleetwood or Southampton? There's lots of things to tuck in. The vice captain, everything as you just saw. Yes. Oh, There's only the only way to get your next fix is watching the next episode. If you enjoyed this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment. I will see you for the next episode. Until then, from me to you.